In this video, we're going to practice the computation of a matrix times a vector and look at identity matrices. So here's how we multiply a matrix times a vector and we use something called the dot product. So I alluded to this in the last video. So what we do is we multiply a row of a matrix and we multiply the column of the vector. So here's what we do. We take the first entry of our, of our row, we take one, and we take the first entry of our column. So in this case, we have one times x. And then we add the second entry of the row in A multiplied by the second entry of the column in x. So here we have two times y. And then we keep going until we finish the whole thing. So this is going to be plus three times z. So that's how we do the first one. In the second entry of b, we multiply the second row times the column of x. So in this case, we have the first entry of the second row of a times the first entry in x. So this is 4x. Then we do the second entry in a times the second entry in x, so that's plus 5y, and then plus 6z. And this continues. So the third time we do the third row of a times the column x, and then we get 7x plus 8y plus 9z. This went a little fast. Don't worry, because we have a practice example here. So these have real numbers, so this will make a little bit more sense. So let's do this very carefully here. So first, for the first entry, we take the first row in A times the first column in X. So the first entry in A and X are 2 and 2. So we multiply 2 times 2, and then we add the second entries. So this is the 3 and the 4. So we add 3 times 4. So that's going to give us 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 times 4 is 12. So our first entry is going to be 16. Okay, so now let's do the second one. So now we start off with the second row of A and the column X. So for our first one we take 6 times 2, so that's 6 times 2, and then we add 4 times 4. So in this case we get 12 plus 16, which is equal to 28. So our result is the 2 by 1 vector 16, 28, and that is how we compute A times X. Notice the way I told you before works exactly the same. So if we take these A1 and A2, we label this X1 and X2, then we get X1 A1 plus X2 A2. So this is going to be equal to two times two six plus four times the vector three four, which gives you four twelve plus twelve sixteen which is equal to 16, 28. So these two methods are exactly the same. Now you might be saying, why learn this second method of using dot products? Well, it's because when we do matrices that have a matrix times a matrix, so we could have A1 or A11, A12, A21, A22 times another matrix, so we have B11, B12, B21, and B22, then things are not going to work as nicely. We can't do the same thing as we did using X1A1 plus X2A2 because this is not a vector right here. So how would we do that? Well, we just use the dot product. So we go row by column, row by column, then we switch it up and we do row by second column, row by second column, and we get a resulting matrix. 
So that is why you need to learn how to do this AX computation with the dot product as shown above. So I'll use that concept to show you what an identity matrix does. So what is an identity matrix? Well, it looks like this 1001. So let's use the method of dot products and figure out what result we get. So remember we multiply row by column. So our first one is gonna be one X one plus zero times x2. And for our second one, take the second row, the first column, we get 0x1 plus 1x2. What is the result of this? Well, this is x1 and x2. So what does the identity matrix do? Well, the identity matrix takes the thing we're multiplying back to itself. So i2 times some vector x is equal to the vector x. It's kind of like multiplying by one. So if we take one times some number c, we get the number c back. So that's what this identity matrix is. So why is it called i2? Well, it's called i2 because it is a two by two matrix. So here's the question, what does i n look like? Just for whatever dimension we need. So i n is going to be an n by n matrix. So here's how you construct an identity matrix that is n by n. You put a one in the top left and you fill the rest of the rows or the rest of the row with zeros. Just put some dot dot dots there. Let me do some more here. And that is the first row in the first column. Then you move diagonally one and you put a one there. And then you fill the rest up with zeros in the row and column. And you just keep doing this until this whole line is just filled with ones, this whole diagonal line. And that's the only non-zero entries are ones on this diagonal line. And this will always give you back the item that you're multiplying by. So it should look like this, um, zero, 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 zero. That looks good. So this will have n rows and it will also have n columns. So if I take, for instance, i n and I multiply it by the vector x, which is in n dimensions, the vector x has to be in n dimensions, then we'll get x back. If I take the identity matrix and multiply it by some matrix A, then we get the matrix A back. So whatever we multiply by I n, as long as it's the same dimension, we will get the corresponding item back. So that's the identity matrix. That's how we compute AX. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll answer them as best as I can. If this video helped you out, share it with your friends because it may help them out too.